Hi, my name is Dawn Matthews. Welcome to another exciting lesson in this series on computer hardware. Today we're going to send Archie and Salai out on a mission to find as many input devices as they can. Then we're going to find out how each one works. But before we start, let's take a quick look at what we've learned about input devices from our previous lessons. In lesson 1, we learned that an input device is a device which allows us to enter data or instructions into the computer. We also saw that you get different kinds of input devices. Some we've seen include a keyboard, a mouse and a barcode scanner. In addition to these, there are many different input devices and in this lesson, we will take a look at some of them. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify different input devices, state the purposes for which different input devices are used and list different ways in which input devices send data to the computer. Hey Dawn, we're here at this cool computer store called Incredible Connection and my word, you will not believe the amount of cool stuff we found here. Yeah man, I mean look at this, this is a scanner and a scanner is an input device. Yes, a scanner is an input device that captures an image and then sends it through to the computer as input. It does this by making a digital copy of the original image. This is called digitizing. I've heard that word but how does it work? The scanner takes the original image and breaks it up into tiny little blocks of data. Each block is then given a number. This number represents the color of the block. These blocks are arranged in grids which are called bitmaps. All this digital data is then sent to the CPU and rearranged in the right order on the screen like this. Yeah man, I'm gonna check this out. And this one's called a flatbed scanner. Hmm, I wonder how this works. Let me try and find someone who'll answer that for me. Well, I managed to find someone who knows all about flatbed scanners, and his name is Lawrence. How are you doing today? Finding yourself. Awesome. Now, can you please tell us how this works? Sure, let me take you through. This is a flatbed scanner. We sometimes call it the desktop scanner. This is how it works. You place the document into the lid, and then it doesn't print out. It transfers the data or the image into the computer so that you can work on it. It works similar to a photocopy machine. Have a look. You place your image on what looks like a glass plate and close the lid. Look what happens when I press the scan button on the scanner. It will automatically open the software on the screen. Now, let's look at our scanned image. As you can see, the image has appeared on the screen. The original picture has been scanned and processed and the result has been displayed on the screen. Okay, let me get this right. The picture was sent to the scanner and the scanner sent the picture to the computer, which means that the scanner is an input device. The computer then processed mm -hmm. and then it came up with a result. And the result is what's being displayed on the screen. You know what that sounds like to me? It sounds like output. Very good. Let's have a look at some of the other kinds of scanners. Thanks, but I know that there's some other kinds of scanners out there. Yeah, like remember that one that was used when we went shopping? Yes, that's called a stationary label scanner or barcode scanner. These types of scanners are often built into the tills at supermarkets. They're used to read the information of a barcode. This is an easy way to get product information into a computer without making mistakes. You can also get a handheld version of a barcode scanner. <laughs> hey, this looks like a handheld scanner. Yes, any small handheld device that scans an image as you move over a sheet of paper is called a handheld scanner. These scanners work in the same way as flatbed scanners but are not normally used to scan a whole page or image. They're designed to scan smaller images that take up half a page or less, like a barcode. Well, that's that with scanners. What's next? Now let's look at one of the most important input devices of them all, the keyboard. 
Is there only one kind of keyboard or are there others? Yo, like, check this out. I found a whole range of keyboards. Now, I remember this one. This is called the, the QWERTY keyboard. Mm -hmm. And if you guys look at the top row of keys carefully, you'll see that they spell out QWERTY. Good, you two. A keyboard is used to input letters, numbers, or instructions into the computer. But Archie, go back to where you were and you will find a keyboard that has no cables. That is because it's wireless. But I don't understand. How does this wireless keyboard communicate to the computer if they're not connected? Well, it does connect with the computer, but it's not connected with cables. This is how it works. A signal is sent from this wireless device to the infrared port on the keyboard. Do any other input devices work in the same way? Actually, yes. Have a look at the mouses. Uh, mouses. That doesn't sound right. Shouldn't it be mice? <laughs> the truth is that in computer circles, both words are used to describe more than one computer mouse. Each pick up a mouse. Can you see one has a cable that connects it to the computer and one doesn't? Like the keyboard, the wireless mouse doesn't need cables. Instead, it has a small, high-frequency radio transmitter built into it. This transmitter sends a signal to the computer without needing a cable. Woohoo, over here. <laughs> well, I just want to know, so what kind of data do mouses send to the computer? Mouses send data about their changing position to the computer. These instructions are instantly processed and make the mouse pointer move around the screen in the same way that the mouse is moved. The mouse also has buttons. Clicking on these mouse buttons allows you to select or highlight text or icons on the screen. And we get different kinds of mouses. So far we know about the optical mouse and the standard mouse. Correct. Have a look at this mouse. It is a standard mouse. It should be familiar to you because these mouses are what you usually use at school and at home. Turn it over and you will see it has a ball at the bottom. When you move the mouse, this ball rolls along the surface of the table. At the same time, the ball pushes against rollers inside the mouse. This movement of the ball and rollers provides data about the mouse's changing position, which is sent to the computer. A standard mouse is the cheapest kind of mouse. That's why it's so commonly used. But the standard mouse needs constant maintenance and cleaning. If you don't clean the mouse, the ball and rollers will get sticky and stop the mouse from moving smoothly. This mouse over here is called an optical mouse. An optical mouse does away with the need for cleaning because, as you can see, it does not have a ball or roller at the bottom. So, how does it work? It works by sending out light from a tiny transmitter that is located underneath it. As the mouse moves, the light provides data about the mouse's changing position. This data is then sent to the computer where it is processed. An optical mouse is faster and more efficient than a standard mouse, but it's also more expensive. Now go and have a look at a laptop. Do you remember what can be used instead of a mouse? Oh yes, it's the touchpad. Hey look Archie, they've also got joysticks. Joysticks? Now mm. that sounds like fun. Well, yes, a joystick is usually used to play games. They're good for controlling movement and they have buttons for firing and jumping. They've also got digital cameras. Isn't that an input device? Yes, digital cameras allow you to input photographs into your computer. You can then view these photos on the screen, print them out and even email them to your friends. And look over here, they've got a webcam and a microphone, and these two are both input devices. Yes, a webcam is a small camera that connects to your computer. It can capture moving images and then send them into your computer as a digital signal. Once your computer has received this digital signal, it can send it out onto the internet.
This means that the picture from your webcam can be watched by anyone connected to the internet. If you also have a microphone, you can send a voice message with the picture from the webcam. So if you and a friend both had a webcam and a microphone, you could see and hear each other over the internet. Okay, we're doing pretty well. <laughs> yeah. So far we found different types of scanners, mouses, keyboards, joysticks, microphones, webcams. I mean, what other input devices could there be? Well, remember when we looked at PDAs? Sure. Well, the PDA uses its touch screen as a form of input device. Oh, I remember. So in order to enter information into the computer, you just touch the screen instead of typing on a keyboard or using a mouse, right? Right. Now, do you get a bigger version of a touch-sensitive screen? Yes, I'm standing in front of one. Like the PDA screen, the smart board is also both an input and output device. A touch-sensitive screen like this is particularly useful for presentations at conferences and in classrooms and lecture rooms at schools and universities. We also make a lot of use of this screen at Mindset. Well, I think we did pretty well, don't you? You better be. Yeah! <laughs> we found different types of input devices all over the shop. And I'm definitely sure that there's some input devices that we never even thought of. Well, maybe. But right now, I think we should take a break. How about milkshakes? Well... I'm buying. Cool, you said the magic words. Let's go! Thanks, guys. You did really well. <laughs> Archie and Salai have certainly helped us find many different input devices. But while they've been in the shops, I've been doing some research of my own and i found some other types of input devices. These input devices are very specialized and you won't get them in ordinary computer shops. They've been designed for a very specific purpose and they have made a huge impact on the lives of the people who use them. For example, have you ever thought about how a blind person can work a computer? Well, let's have a look and find out. People who are visually impaired cannot work on a computer like we do. They cannot see what they're typing and they cannot check their results on a screen. However, there are now special software and devices that give them access to computer technology. Have a look at some of these amazing input devices I have found. One piece of hardware is the Braille keyboard. If you look at this keyboard, you will see that the keys are in exactly the same position as the keys on a standard keyboard. But you will notice that each key has a Braille symbol on it. Braille symbols are a system of raised dots which are placed in certain patterns. Each little pattern of dots stands for a letter in the alphabet. For example, this pattern of dots stand for mindset. Because braille dots are raised off the surface, they feel like little bumps when you run your finger over them. Visually impaired or blind people learn to read by running their fingers over lines of these braille dots, just like we run our eyes over printed letters on a page. So the braille dots on a keyboard allow the visually impaired person to feel which keys they are pressing. The braille computer keyboard has developed from the braille typewriter like this one that's being used at the SA Blind Workers Association. If you cannot use your fingers, hands or arms to type, you can enter information into a computer using your voice. Voice recognition software recognizes your voice and turns your spoken words into typing. Now, what about mouses? A computer mouse is a pretty simple device for most people to use, but what if you are physically disabled and cannot take hold of the mouse? Luckily, very